Bradley Cooper American actor and filmmaker Bradley Charles Cooper is an American actor and filmmaker. He is the recipient of various accolades, including a British Academy Film Award and two Grammy Awards. In addition, he has been nominated for 12 Academy Awards, six Golden Globe Awards, and a Tony Award. Born, January 5, 1975, age 49 years, Abington Township, Pennsylvania, United States. Spouse, Jennifer Esposito, M., 2006-2007. Height, 1.85 meters. Children, 1. Parents, Gloria Campano, Charles Cooper. Siblings, Holly Cooper. Bradley Charles Cooper was born on January 5, 1975, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His mother, Gloria, Campano, is of Italian descent, and worked for a local NBC station. His father, Charles John Cooper, who was of Irish descent, was a stockbroker. Immediately after Bradley graduated from the Honors English program at Georgetown University in 1997, he moved to New York City to enroll in the Masters of Fine Arts program at the Actors Studio Drama School at New School University. There, he developed his stage work, culminating with his thesis performance as John Merrick in Bernard Pomerantz's The Elephant Man, performed in New York's Circle in the Square. While still in school, Bradley began his professional career, appearing opposite Sarah Jessica Parker on Sex and the City, 1998, and on the drama series The Beat, 2000. His weekends were spent with Leap, learning through the Expanded Arts Program, a non-profit organization that teaches acting and movement to inner-city school children. The summers took him all across the globe, from kayaking in British Columbia with orca whales, to ice climbing in the Peruvian Andes, while hosting Lonely Planet's Treks in a Wild World, 2000, for the Discovery Channel. Bradley had to miss his graduation ceremony from the Actors Studio in order to star in his first feature, Wet Hot American Summer. 2001. After finishing his second feature Bending All the Rules, 2002, his plans to relocate to Los Angeles were delayed when Darren Starr hired him to star on the drama series The Dollar Treat, 2000. Bradley went on to win the role of young law student Gordon Pinella in Changing Lanes, 2002, starring Ben Affleck and Samuel L. Jackson, and also played Travis Patterson in My Little Eye, 2002. He finally decided that it was time to forego his other New York projects and move to Los Angeles when he was cast on Alias, 2001. After supporting roles in Wedding Crashers, 2005, Failure to Launch, 2006, The Comebacks, 2007, The Rocker, 2008, and Yes Man, 2008, Cooper broke out with major roles in He's Just Not That Into You, 2009, The Hangover, 2009, and Valentine's Day, 2010. He co-starred in the action film The A-Team, 2010, and headlined the thriller film Limitless, 2011. Cooper received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor after starring opposite Jennifer Lawrence in David O. Russell's Silver Linings Playbook, 2012. He then received two more consecutive Oscar nominations, Best Supporting Actor for playing Richie DeMasso in Russell's American Hustle, 2013, again opposite Lawrence though their characters shared no significant screen time, and Best Actor for playing Navy SEAL Chris Kyle in Clint Eastwood's American Sniper, 2014, the highest-grossing film of 2014. During this time period, Cooper also reprised his role in The Hangover Part 2, 2011, and The Hangover Part 3, 2013, turned in another strong dramatic turn in The Place Beyond the Pines, 2012 and voiced Rocket Raccoon in the third highest-grossing film of 2014, Guardians of the Galaxy, 2014. In 2015, Bradley headlined two comedies, Cameron Crowe's Aloha, 2015, set in Hawaii, and John Wells Burnt, 2015, set in London, and starred opposite Jennifer Lawrence again in David O. Russell's Joy, 2015. Bradley has a daughter born 2017, with his former partner, model Irina Shaik. Family Spouse Jennifer Esposito, December 21, 2006, to November 10, 2007, divorced. Children Leah Cooper Parents Gloria Campano
Charles John Cooper. Relatives. Colin Campano, cousin. Trademarks. Piercing blue eyes. Often plays devious yet charming characters. Often works with his hero and idol Robert De Niro, David O. Russell, and Jennifer Lawrence. Trivia. Speaks French fluently. He even did an interview, promoting The Hangover Part 2, 2011, entirely in French. Cooper has spent many weekends with the learning through the Expanded Arts Program, LEAP, which is a non-profit organization that teaches inner-city school children about acting, for six months prior to filming The 18, 2010, and during the shoot, he cut out sugar, salt and flour and underwent grueling two-hour workouts with a trainer every day. Was a medalist on the men's heavyweight crew at Georgetown University. Became a father for the first time at age 42 when his now ex-girlfriend Irina Shake gave birth to their daughter Leah DeSane Shake Cooper on March 21, 2017. Considers Daniel Day-Lewis, the world's greatest actor, admitted that in the beginning of his career, casting agents tended to peg him as just a pretty boy, which made finding meaningful roles challenging. Received his first two Oscar nominations in films directed by David O. Russell and with Jennifer Lawrence as his co-star. Silver Linings Playbook, 2012, and American Hustle, 2013. Is the first alumnus of the Actors Studio to be interviewed as a guest on Inside the Actors Studio, 1994. Cooper can be seen in the audience in four episodes, one with guest Robert De Niro, and again with Sean Penn, and finally laid into the interviews with Clint Eastwood and again with Gary Sinise, though if you blink you might miss it. Cooper put himself on tape to audition for a role as De Niro's son in Everybody's Fine, 2009, with his own mother playing the role of De Niro, but lost out to Sam Rockwell. Cooper eventually starred with De Niro in Limitless, 2011, and again as father and son in Silver Linings Playbook, 2012. The film was released to great critical acclaim, and both actors earned Academy Award nominations for their performances. Got Clean and Sober August 1, 2004 Quotes There was a lot of Sack Lodges at my high school. Sack Lodge is his character from Wedding Crashers, 2005. On getting the script for Kitchen Confidential, 2005, I was in New York shooting Law and Order, 1990, and the script came along, and I completely connected to it. From the first page, when he says, ever since I was eight years old, I knew what I wanted to be. When I was eight years old, I wanted to be a chef or an actor. I used to cook all the time. I worked in restaurants the first half of my life. November 2005, I had size 12 feet when I was 10, so I thought I was going to be 6 feet 8 inches. My goal was to be able to dunk a basket. I wound up being 6 feet 1 inch, with size 14 feet. I got the raw end of the deal. 2010, on his younger years, I never lived the life of oh, you're so good looking. People thought I was a girl when I was little, because I looked like a girl, maybe because my mother would keep my hair really long in a bowl cut. I was in a coffee shop once, and the waitress was like, what do you want, miss? I was 10 or 11, the worst age to have that happen. I had a jean jacket on and a Metallica pin, I thought I was really cool. 2010, on the incredible shape he got into for the 18, 2010, as the movie progressed, I got an increasingly better shape. There's this one fight scene with Liam Neeson toward the end, where it's, like, the apex of the work. We finished and Joe Carnahan's like brother, come here, look at this, and he played it back, and I swear to God, it looked like my head was digitally superimposed onto someone else's body. I was like this cannot be me, that's the way I look. It was so fucking surreal, cause as a kid I only fantasized about looking that way. Remember Solo Flex commercials? That was huge when I was a kid. It was like, I wanna be the Solo Flex guy. Mom, can we get the Solo Flex? 2010, on having to put himself on tape to send to casting directors when auditioning for roles as an aspiring actor, I'd love not to have to do that, anymore. I did it for this movie about UFC fighters a few years ago and I didn't know anything about UFC fighters. I wore biking shorts. I was outside in my backyard in Venice, and I was, like kicking the trash cans and shit. I didn't know what I was doing. I would love to fucking see that tape.
2011, Todd Phillips gave Vespas to the cast of The Hangover Part 2, 2011, when we finished shooting. And I thought, a Vespa? What the heck kind of gift is that? I mean, it's nice, but I'll never drive it. But I tell you, I cannot stop riding that Vespa. I dream about it when I'm away. It's gotten to the point where I think I'm screwed, I'm starting to look at motorcycles. 2009, on his nice guy role on Alias, 2001, and how it nearly typecast him, I remember that after I left Alias, people wouldn't even see me. I'd put myself on tape at home for all these roles, because they were like, oh, no, no. Bradley. He's such a good guy. He can't play that. Then it was David Dobkin, I went in for him on Wedding Crashers, 2005, and he had no idea what alias was or anything. So he hired me right away, and that was the major break. Then after that everyone was like, well, isn't he kind of an asshole? I mean, really, I think he's kind of an asshole. Elliot Kazan always said that if you're going to play a cowboy, you better show up with a horse, because no one sees anything but what you bring. It's funny, but sometimes people stop me, and they're amazed that I'm not a complete asshole. They expect me to be an asshole right away. I gained a lot of weight to do Wedding Crashers too, and they're like, oh man, I thought you were bigger, because I was 215 pounds for that movie and I'm usually 185 pounds. But to be opposite Vince Vaughn and believe that I could destroy him in a football game, 2009, on his pets, I have two beautiful dogs that I cherish. Samson is a 14-year-old German short hair pointer and Charlotte is a 6- or 7-year-old chow retriever mix. They are both rescue dogs and they are the best. I'm sort of a hybrid of both my dogs. Samson is stoic and makes me earn it and Charlotte loves me undyingly. They're my kids. 2009, I seriously love to cook. My grandmother was an amazing cook. As a kid, I used to help her make handmade pasta, cavatelli, and ravioli. It was one of my favorite things to do. I love the idea of making whatever is in the fridge into something. 2011, on being considered a very successful actor after The Hangover, 2009, become a huge hit, it doesn't feel that way. Thank you for saying that. Not the case, I gotta say, but it certainly provided more opportunities. Everybody who was a part of that movie, because it was so financially lucrative, benefited from it, but I still put myself on tape for movies and tried to get roles. It's the same, you know? It's the same. I mean, look, more doors have been opened for sure, but it's not like I sit back with a cigar on Monday morning and go through the scripts that have been offered, no, that's not the case. 2011, on how he spends his spare time, eating. I eat a lot of food. I am a big eater. On the characters in Silver Linings Playbook, 2012, the fact that these guys are trying to adopt a positive attitude was really important to me. As Jack Nicholson always says, try to incline yourself upwards as much as possible, because it is too easy in this world to incline yourself downwards. These people have every reason to incline themselves downwards, but they're trying to rebuild the economy of their lives. And that's why, they, aren't so fringy to me they become the most sane people in the room. Filming a movie with David O. Russell is an athletic endeavor. You are utterly drained at the end of the day because you have to be present at every turn, as if you're on a sports field. That high-octane rhythm demands that you stay in the moment and get out of your head. It's the only way you can be successful as an athlete. That's very scary for an actor. 2012, on quitting drinking at age 29, I was at a party and deliberately bashed my head on the concrete floor. Like, hey, look how tough I am. I did it again. I spent the night at St. Vincent's Hospital with a sock of ice, waiting for them to stitch me up. I don't drink or do drugs anymore. Being sober helps a great deal. I remember looking at my life, my apartment, my dogs, when I was still using, and I thought, what's happening? I was so concerned what, people, thought of me, how I was coming across, how I would survive the day. I always felt like an outsider. I just lived in my head. I realized I wasn't going to live up to my potential, and that scared the hell out of me. I thought, wow, I'm actually gonna ruin my life. I'm really gonna ruin it, 
On shooting The Hangover, 2009, in Las Vegas, people did not react to us. That's the one thing about Vegas, they were completely indifferent. We would go in the elevator at 5 in the morning after shooting, and I had huge scratches on my head, full makeup, and they don't give a fuck. It was unbelievable. I plead guilty to the accusation of working with people again and again. That's the goal, to create an artistic circle that works. If you look at any period of art that's really exploding, it's people collaborating again and again. I don't see myself as a ladies' man, but I love women. On his approach to acting, I don't see a difference between a dramatic role and a comedic role, because they're all characters I play, and people that are not me. To Howard Stern on why he and frequent co-star Jennifer Lawrence never had any romantic relationship, I said that once on the carpet as a diffuse thing, and then it became a big thing because the girl I was seeing was as young as she was. It just didn't happen, it's just not the way we are together. She's absolutely not, too young. That's insulting, that hurt. Laughs. I've always known I wanted to direct. Always, so it was about facing the fear of doing it. I said by 40 if I hadn't taken a shot, shame on me. On Lady Gaga, I love her so deeply. It's because we were at our most vulnerable together. Salaries. American Hustle, 2013, $2,500,000, plus 9% gross point. The Hangover Part 3, 2013, $15 million. The Hangover Part 2, 2011, $5 million. The Hangover, 2009, $600,000. Thank <laughs> you.